What's going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for watching. Today I have a video that I'm very excited about. I'm going to go over the best resources when prepping for a software engineering interview. Now whether you're studying for an interview coming up or you're just trying to brush up on your skills, there's tons of resources out there. So, you know, how do you pick which ones work well and which ones don't? Well, I'm going to go over the ones that I've used firsthand and I'm going to go over the ones that um, worked well for me. Now, there's no one silver bullet for prepping for interviews. Um, all these resources help me in their own individual way. So I think uh, the best is to kind of get exposure to every single one, try out what works well for you, and go from there. So without further ado, let's jump into the resources. So the first resource we have is going to be Leak Code. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that this is my bread and butter, this is my go-to, this is the resource that I use the most when I'm prepping for interviews. Um, and I really like it just because it has a great uh, diversity of problems. Um, I think they have over a thousand uh, algorithm type problems. Um, as you can see, the ones with the green check marks are the ones that I've completed. So I've done obviously a lot of these. I really like it because you can go here, you can sort by frequency. Um, and this is gonna be problems that people have seen in live interviews. You can also sort it by the difficulty. There's easy, medium, and hard. Um, you can go over to the right. If you have an account, you can see your progress. You can see the problems that you've solved, the ones that you've attempted, and the ones that you have left to go. So I still have a ton that I haven't done. Um, if you go down here, you can see that you have, uh, you can sort by, you go top Amazon questions, top Facebook questions, Google, etc. cetera. Um, if you look over here to the right, there is a lock. Um, meaning that you need to have purchased a subscription in order to access these features. So you'll have some things like this where you have to have a subscription to sort by company. There's also certain problems, as you can see here, that you need for a subscription. But you can totally get by without it. Um, you can also go down here, you can see what's asked by company. And then here as well, you can see topics. So if you go to like dynamic programming, you can see, again, you can sort here by frequency, difficulty, etc. cetera. Um, so if you really are trying to like dive deep into a certain topic, uh, Lead Code has a great um, feature for that. Another thing that I like is the mock interviews. Now, again, you do need a subscription in order to access these, but I highly recommend getting a subscription. Um, so what you can do is you can see that they have like online assessment, phone interview, on-site interview. Um, and you can kind of go through and kind of like emulate the actual interview process here. Um, and they have a lot of different top companies. They have Google, Facebook, Amazon, Adobe, Apple, etc. So a lot of the top companies, and this is a resource that I really like about LeetCode. If you go into my account, I'll go ahead and show you my subscription. So you can either do the monthly, which is $35 a month, uh, or you can do the yearly, which is $159. Um, I do have the yearly. Um, it was funny because I was, doing, I kept like renewing my monthly one. And then eventually I was like, you know what? I'll just go for the yearly. And as soon as I did that, I got a job and I don't use it as much. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but I do still go on here from time to time just to keep my skills sharp. So that's lead code for you. That's the first resource I recommend and I do highly recommend it. Now the second resources that I recommend are going to be these two books here. So, First one I have here is called Program Elements of Programming Interviews, right there. Um, this is written in C++. I'll leave a link for this in the description. And um, honestly, I haven't really used this book too much. As you can see, it's like pretty still brand new, even though I've had it for like five years. Um, this is kind of when I first started coding, I was I just only used C++. And when I cracked this open, I had like no idea what was going on just because I was kind of a noob at the time. Um, and then by the time I started getting better at programming, I transitioned over to Java, um, which brings me to Cracking the Coding Interview by Gail Lockman. Um, and you, as you can tell, this book I've kind of torn apart. Um, I highly recommend this one. And in fact, um, I'm gonna go over the table of contents and let you guys know which, uh, which chapters I recommend. All right, so jumping into Cracking the Coding Interview, let's go down to the table of contents. And so you have your introduction here. Um, the most important section here is gonna be the big O annotation. So this is gonna be your time and space complexity and 
I mean, this is like something that gets asked during any type of interview where you're doing an algorithm. At the end, they're going to ask you what's the time and space complexity, and you got to like pretty much nail it. Um, sometimes it's like a hard rejection if you can't figure out what your time and space compl complexity is because they want you to know how uh, efficient your code is. So highly recommend this one. It has some really good exercises in there. Uh, technical questions. Uh, this is a good read. Um, it walks you through how to solve a problem. Um, offer and beyond, that's you know optional. And then right here, uh, interview questions. This is gonna be the meat of the book. So you have your arrays and strings, obviously very important, link lists, stacks and queues, trees and graphs. This is all good stuff here that you wanna read through. Um, bit manipulation, mm, I would say I've hardly been asked bit manipulation problems uh, in interviews. Uh, and there are better resources than this book here. So that one you can skip through. Uh, same with math and logic puzzles. Object-oriented design, this is a really good chapter. Um, I've had a bunch of interviews where it's solely focused on uh, OOD. Uh, recursion and dynamic programming, very important. System design and scalability, yeah, this is a good chapter to read through. Um, sorting and searching, uh, this one, there's better resources. Testing, I haven't even touched that. I've read this Java chapter as well, um, and then databases as well. Um, so those are more optional and it depends on like what role you're going for. Um, so I would say, um, yeah, the ones that I mentioned are the ones that are the chapters that really work for me. All right, the next resource I have for you guys is Grokking the System Design Interview. This is a course on educative.io. And I believe the course was about $70, which I think is totally worth it for the for what you're getting. Uh, if we go into the course here, um, you can see they have a bunch of different um, systems that you can design, like designing Instagram, Dropbox, Twitter, like there's a bunch of really good stuff in here. Um, and they all kind of follow a similar structure. And the more times you go through it, you kind of, you know, you become more comfortable with it. And um, system design is a interview that I've gotten many times. Like a lot of times when you're going through a multi-day or a multi-interview day, um, a lot of times one interview will be solely focused on system design. So it's something that you, that's like essential that you need to know. Um, so for example, let's go into designing Twitter. So the first thing is um, it goes through the requirements and the goals of the system. Um, so this is the best thing to start out with when you're, with the, when you get a system design question, it's kind of like, um, going over the requirements. So you have functional requirements like users should be able to post new tweets, a user should be able to follow other users, etc. You'll have non-functional requirements such as the service needs to be highly available, etc. And then you'll have extended requirements which you probably won't get into but it's a good thing to think about like things like searching for tweets or replying to a tweet. Uh, then you get down to the capacity estimation and constraints. Um, I would say this part isn't as important because this is like, okay, if we have 1 billion users, we kind of want to estimate the bandwidth and how much memory we have. A lot of times in system design problems, they'll just want you to have like, okay, let's just focus if we have like 100 users, how do you design like the simple, like the simplest kind of minimum viable product for this. Um, so then it goes down to system APIs. So you have a tweet API with a bunch of parameters. Um, this right here is really important. This is what you're going to be drawing in almost any system design uh, interview. It's going to be the high level system design. You'll just have something like basic, like your app server, your databases, etc. Then if you have a relational database, you'll go through your tables, uh, has things like data sharding, uh, kind of more advanced topics, you know, caching. Um, this is a more advanced uh, system design drawing. And then you'll have things like load balancing, monitoring, et cetera. So it gets pretty involved. Um, so that's why I think that this is a really good resource and I highly recommend that you guys look into it as well. The next resource we have is interviewing.io. Now this is a website where you can log into and schedule anonymous interviews. So you can either interview someone or you could be the interviewee. Let me sign in. And so what you do is you go to schedule a practice interview, uh, gives you a bunch of time slots to pick from, and then you just pick one and then you book it. I think this website is probably the closest thing you're gonna get to a real live interview. Um, it's gonna be someone on the other end that you've never met, um, and they're gonna ask you some challenging problems. Um, I've done this a few times, and I've definitely, I've done well in a few, and I've definitely bombed a few. 
Um, so it's better to bomb it here than in the real interview. Um, the only issue I have with this is that a lot of times people will cancel interviews. So you like send, you know, you'll set out like an hour of your day. You'll have like your tea ready, ready to go. And then as soon as you're about to start, it'll be canceled. So that's kind of a bummer there. Uh, another good one is Pramp.com. Um, this one, you get matched up with a person. And then the first half is you interviewing them. The second half is them interviewing you. So it gives you a really cool perspective about uh, interviewing someone else. So yeah, that's the other two resources that I have for you guys. Um, next thing we have here is going to be interview boot camps. Now I'm sure, of, or maybe you haven't heard of uh, just like regular coding boot camps. Um, it's like usually like you know one to two months of someone going from you know not being able to code, and then by the end you're supposed to be proficient in like either a certain language or proficient as like a web developer. However, there is now a few resources that are boot camps that are just focused on interviews. So there's one here called interviewkickstart.com. Um, this one I actually haven't used, so uh, I can't really speak much for it. However, there's another one called Outco. This is a course that I was actually enrolled in a few months ago. And um, let me go down to the syllabus here. So as you can see, you know, a lot of people have gotten jobs here. So if you do this, you might get a job at Tinder. Um, but if we go down to the syllabus, here. So how it works is it's five weeks. The first week is going to be all remote. Uh, the next four weeks, um, if you live in San Francisco, it's going to be uh, in a classroom setting. So as you can see here, it's basic and it gets a little bit more advanced. Um, I kind of disagree because we did dynamic programming our first week. So um, it is a little out of order there. But I would say, except for the cost, I would recommend this because you get a lot of you're basically doing practice interviews every day. You're doing behavioral as well as technical, as well as like whiteboarding questions. So it definitely helped me out. Um, however, the price is kind of high um, and I'll let you guys look into the price. But um, actually, I'll just tell you guys, um, they give you three options. You can either pay $5,000 straight up. You can pay 1,500 and 5% of your first year salary, or you can pay um, nothing straight up, but 10% of your first year salary. So if you get a job and you're making like a hundred to hundred fifty, like hundred fifty k, it's going to be ten to fifteen thousand dollars you have to pay for this class. Um, definitely overpriced, but I do think that for the right person it works out. Um, there are definitely people in the class, and this might be sound kind of harsh, but they, I, they probably would have had no chance getting like a really good programming job unless they went through this course. Um, I felt like I had a pretty good foundation, so it definitely improved my skills, but it didn't take me from like zero to hero or anything like that. Um, so it kind of just depends on what situation you're in, how much you're willing to pay and um, what your skill level is. And last but not least, I recommend real interviews. Um, like I mentioned, there's interviewing.io and Pramp, which gives you a mock interview, but there's really nothing like a real interview. Uh, you know, you have your adrenaline rushing, um, it's, it's, you're nervous, um, but I think that's kind of a good thing to be, you know, a little bit nervous. Um, but the more you do it, uh, trust me guys, the less, the less intimidating it becomes, the more you can just focus on writing your code and, you know, and, and it just becomes better over time. So for myself personally, um, during my interviewing phase, I was taking interviews of jobs where I probably wasn't going to even accept the offer, uh, just to get practice. And, um, I, have, I highly recommend you guys do the same thing. And with that, that's going to conclude this video. Um, hopefully these tips help you guys. Um, like I mentioned, I've used all these resources myself. They've all helped me tremendously. Um, so I highly recommend it for you guys. Um, when you're interviewing, uh, you know, it's, I, trust me, no one's been rejected from interviews more than I have. Um, so, you know, don't get discouraged. You have to have thick skin and just know that the right opportunity will come if you work hard and be patient. So that's going to be all for this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, as always, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and um, let me know in the comments if there are any resources that I didn't mention that you like. Um, and that's going to be all for this video. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.